Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This is to show you what the iPods in the classroom grant would actually look like and to kind of give you a better understanding of how the iPods could be used in the classroom. So here what I've done is I've taken my own personal iPod and uh, loaded it up with some different materials that could be used in the classroom. Um, the iPod is not just a music player. It can store different text files. It can store video files. It can store audio files that all relate to education. These are some sample ones I downloaded that some other teachers or some other businesses had already made. Uh, I'd like to kind of show you some of those now. Um, this is kind of a sample of what a typical lesson could look like. This would give the student a one-to-one -one experience using the iPod to actually read a little bit of the notes. The teacher would create this text document, load it into the iPod. Um, you see these other things here that, that highlight as I'm scrolling. Uh, you can click on these and you can attach this text document to video files, to audio files, and uh, the student can scroll through, click on them, and, and see what they're about. So let's click on one of these. This is a math movie that was part of this particular lesson. Equations. And remember, everything you do to one side of the equation must be done to both sides. Let's solve x plus 4 equals 15. In order to get x by itself, we need to use inverse operations. Because 4 is added to x, we need to do the opposite and subtract 4. And we need to do this to both sides. Then we'll bring down what's left. On the left side, we have x. The positive 4 and negative 4 cancel each other out. And on the right side, we get 15 minus 4 is 11. So our answer is x equals 11. So that's just a sample movie. Um, there's another one in here that this teacher decided to create. If we go to figurative language movie. This was a PowerPoint. The teacher added their own voice and that was able to be loaded onto the iPod. And the teacher actually reads the information. Comparing two unlike things, often using the words like or as. Can you think of an example of a simile? This was a sample for a chemistry class. A teacher decided to put some text files, some audio files, some video files together, and also some still images and link them all together. So if the student was reading the notes for this class, um, this would be an image that would pop up that would be the periodic table. This was just a sample image that was thrown in by the teacher. So that is one example of how the iPod could be used. Another example is, a, is that this iPod could be used as an assessment tool by the students. There is a game that can be loaded on here called iQuiz and we'll let that load up. Uh, what iQuiz is is just a simple um, quiz program. It lets the person using it answer true, false, or multiple choice questions. Those could be created by the teacher and also loaded onto the iPod. And what I've done is I've made a sample quiz for my class, for my current computer class, to kind of show how that would work. So what this is is just a simple quiz. The, the student has time. There's a timer on the bottom that is going to expire soon. There's a multiple choice question. Uh, the student would click on the right, whoop, I missed that one, would click on the right answer and proceed. And the, the iPod keeps track of their score and gives a score at the end. So this would be another assessment tool that could be used by the teacher. Uh, the student would then show their score to the teacher and the teacher can alter the settings to make it so that the student could only take the quiz once and, and has a certain amount of time with, within which to take the quiz. Another means for using the iPod could be if the teacher wants to just let the student listen to a reading rather than do the reading or to read along with a book. Uh, if you use some of the main menu features of the iPod, you'll see that one of the choices in here is audiobooks. And uh, what teachers could do is either record themselves reading the book or if they were able to find the book already being read by someone online, they could download that, put it into the iPod and allow the student to listen to the book um, while they read along. Uh, this might be a good alternative learning setting for um, students that need that, that kind of uh, listening motivation. Um, so for example here, here's a book that I've downloaded on my own iPod that I was listening to 
um, just while driving and it just plays through and right now it's actually the author reading the book. Uh, so that would be another way for this to be used in the classroom. There's also podcasts. Students in class could listen to podcasts using the iPod. Podcasts are audio or video shows that are free. They're able to be downloaded. So if a teacher finds some podcasts that relate to their content area, um, maybe there's some speeches by uh, famous presidents that could be used in a social studies class or a video that shows how to conduct a science experiment. There's, there's tons of podcasts out there that teachers could find and put onto the iPod and the, the student could use in the classroom. The last feature I'd like to show you of the iPod is the ability for the iPod to record. There is this little contraption called iTalk. This connects to the bottom of the iPod and there are two microphones on the iTalk that allow the iTalk to now become a recording device. This can be record. This can be a recording device for teachers to have uh, record themselves if they want to record a class lecture um, or to give to the student if the student is using the iPod. They could set this down and read a book and record themselves and play it back to check for correct pronunciation of different words uh, or to check for comprehension. Uh, this could also be used as an interview tool. If students are to interview anyone, they could set this on the table, conduct their interview, and then take the iPod back to the computer, plug it in, and uh, use that audio to make kind of a radio show or a podcast. So these are all the different features you could use with the iTalk Pro. It's just a $30 add-on that is part of the grant proposal. So thank you for watching this little video. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of all the things we can do with the iPod. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching.